Leather breeches are a very practical garment. So they're considered first and foremost workwear before anything else. And if you think about most people in Virginia and really most people in the 18th century, they're pursuing some kind of labor. So leather breeches are incredibly practical for farmers. They are practical for tradesmen. They are practical for someone who's doing a lot of horseback riding. Uh, so they become a very practical garment and uh, not incredibly fashionable. The only time you might see them in that fashionable sense is if you are hunting or sporting in a fashionable way. Maybe you are going fox hunting with a bunch of your buddies or you're just going to the hunt breakfast. You most likely are wearing leather breeches with the rest of your hunting suit. But other than that, work wear. With making leather breeches, it's not too dissimilar from making fabric clothing, except instead of working with bolts of fabric, we're working with skins. Um, so when skins are received, uh, they can be laid out uh, and we can use either stencils to lay on top of them or we can pattern directly onto the leather, um, cut out all of our shapes and then hand those pieces off to skilled stitchers who can uh, put the pieces together um, until they're ready to be fit to the individual. Leather breeches making requires a limited number of tools, to be honest. Uh, it is one of those things that you can pack up into a small box if you really need it to. Of course, you need needles and thread. We primarily use Glover's needles, which is a triangular tipped needle. The threads that we're using oftentimes are made out of flax and sewing silk. Uh, you need a good pair of scissors to, to cut out your leather, but probably the most important tool are your hands and your eyes. And that is part of what the apprenticeship is for, is to train both your eye and your hand to be able to do the work quickly and effectively. Most of what we work with here is deer skin. Um, and a lot of that deer skin is coming from the back country of the colonies, places like the Ohio Territory, the Deep South, uh, the Western parts of uh, the colony of Virginia. These skins are being hunted not only by commercial hunters, but oftentimes by native hunters as well and indigenous tribes were really integral in the deerskin trade here in the colonies, especially in the South. Um, and we find that the hundreds of thousands of skins that are being sent to England every year for processing, many of them are coming from uh, these native people. This trade is incredibly diverse. Not only do we see men practicing this trade, but we also see women practicing this trade as well. It's also one that you probably see across a couple of different ages. So you have young apprentices who are just learning this work all the way up to someone who has probably been doing this work for 40 or 50 years. We are still looking to see if we can specifically document enslaved individuals making leather breeches, but we definitely know that they were most likely part of the process of getting those skins from the point of harvest to the actual finished product, whether it be simply from moving things, whether they are part of the actual uh, making of the leather itself, which is a whole separate trade, or within the, the transportation of those materials. England has uh, a vast workforce, but no natural resources, and the colonies have the opposite problem. Uh, we have an incredible amount of resources without uh, the population to produce finished goods. So here in the colonies, we see hunters going out, hunting these deer skins, having those deer skins salted and preserved, and then sent, in many cases, all the way back to England, where they're processed by a huge force of skilled labor. And those finished goods, whether they are finished dress skins or finished leather breeches, uh, are oftentimes shipped back to the colonies to be sold off at a profit. You can't get much closer to someone than when you talk about their clothes, right? We get dressed every morning, we put on things that are special to us or things that are comfortable, and leather breeches are something that men and boys in the 18th century put on because they had to, because they were told to, because they wanted to, or because it was what was comfortable to them. And if you want to see someone in leather breeches from the 18th century, all you gotta do is go to our DeWitt Wallace Museum and see our portrait of George Washington. He's leaning on that cannon. He's wearing a pair of leather breeches.